Hello, good evening. Today, the 16th of October 2023, to present Kamla Television News, my name is Jeffrey Ziambo. The top stories in our news tonight, police in Chongwe use tear gas canisters to disperse protesting farmers. Government challenged to disclose bilateral deals on electric vehicles, minerals. The UPND dispels accessions of regional appointments in government. In international news, African leaders arrive in Beijing for third Belt and Road Forum. And in sports news, Chris Kaunda named new Prison Leopards head coach. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver Precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Come to television main news in detail. Business has remained slow for some tailors at Lusaka's Kamala Market due to low demand for attire made with material of national colors ahead of Zambia's independence anniversary, which falls on October 24. Kamne TV News spoke to some of the tailors who say business this year has been slow due to the high cost of living as they go a day without selling any Independence Day commemoration attire. Paul Banda, one of the tailors, says he fears that the attires they have made may not be bought within the few remaining days as people seem uninterested. More in this report. With only about a week before Zambia celebrates its 59th birthday, businesses have remained slow for some tailors at Lusaka's Kamala Market due to low demand for attire made with material of national colors. Kamne TV News crew spoke to some tailors who have expressed displeasure at the pace their businesses are faring ahead of the Independence Day celebrations on 24th of October. Maybe <laughs> Prices, we kill a chairman more prices, but we post I don't know why. This is why we prepared because we are slow. But in a week, you have to Others have attributed this to the high cost of living in the country. No problem, that's why you're a national color. In the Chaka Ambi, Bazankala, Valley Bevan, near problem, a maintenance, a challenge, a man, a people, a Kani and a Zambia celebrates independence on 24th October every year after gaining independence from the colonial masters in 1964. Vincent Piri for Kamne TV News, Lusaka. Zambians have been urged to use the National Day of Prayer, Fasting and Repentance to seek God's intervention in various challenges the country is facing. National Day of Prayer Organizing Committee member Reverend Solomon Bulo says when Christians pray in unity, God answers prayer and the church believes that there will be a turnaround after this year's commemoration. This year's Day of Prayer, Fasting and Repentance is being commemorated 
Under the theme, hard work brings profit, but laziness brings poverty. So some people say, why should I spend time? Maybe just uh, fasting instead of uh, just pray. There are certain things in life, brothers and sisters, that can only be done through prayer and fasting. There was a time when the children of God were casting out demons. They tried, but they failed. And when Jesus appeared on the scene, he said, this kind of demon can only come out through prayer and fasting. There are so many reasons as a nation why we should fast. We are faced with a great, um, great of challenges, many challenges. At the moment, these people are complaining of cost of living that is high. People are complaining of fuel prices. All these are things that have uh, come in the nation. But what should we do as a nation? The answer is not in the politicians. The answer is in the hands of God. For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 14, says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and turn away from their wicked ways. Seek my face. I will forgive their sins. And I will heal their land. The ruling United Party for National Development, UPND, has charged that the country requires social and economic healing in order to attain meaningful development. UPND Chairman for Religious Affairs, Reverend William Unjovo, has implored citizens to turn up for the Day of National Prayer and Reconciliation on Wednesday, 18th October 2023, regardless of political affiliation. This committee, I wish to appeal to my fellow citizens, the Zambians, to take advantage of this God-given opportunity. Uh, this week, when we are celebrating or commemorating the National Day of Prayer, Fasting, Repentance and Reconciliation, to turn up in huge numbers at the showgrounds and other, other designated places where prayers will uh, happen on the 18th of October. Uh, I, I, I wish to say that it is very important for us as a people to come together and pray to God. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn away from their wicked ways, seek my face, and I shall hear them from heaven, I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. And Zambia needs healing. Uh, Zambia needs social healing, economic healing. Uh, Zambia needs uh, healing uh, from every side. And it is only God that can give us uh, that much needed healing. And therefore we have an opportunity to turn up in good numbers and pray. Uh, it doesn't matter which church you belong to, which political party you belong to. All of us are welcome to uh, this day so that we can pray and fast and entreat God to intervene in the affairs of this country. Farmers in Kasisi, in Chongwe district, have been left hopeless following the grading of their vegetable gardens by an investor with the help of Zambia police officers. Police officers in riot gear fired tear gas at the unarmed farmers who helplessly watched their source of livelihood being trashed. The visibly angry farmers are calling on President Hagainde Hichilema, who promised them that no one would move them from their gardens to intervene. More in this report. Just when people started believing that days of tear gas and police force are over, Cassis residents of Chongwe constituency are the latest victims. Smoke and fire is what characterized these vegetable gardens as though it is a war zone somewhere in Ukraine. This is all in an attempt to disperse scores of farmers who watched helplessly as their vegetables were being trashed after an investor allegedly bought the land in question. Back to 2021, prior to the general elections, President Haka Indechirema, in the company of the now Chongwe member of parliament, Sylvia Masevo, promised these people that no one would displace them once he forms government as the stream is God given. <laughs> Kulipa amena za kuchosa kulima muma rivers moja Kulikata ka muma na ni, 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 ni murungu wana kupasani Kuzamba kulima pacha Two years later, the opposite 
is the truth. What is on Muzungu? So manje kwa mena za pereka wana ni kuti. Muzungu ni wamene wa pereka pa Sogoro. Ise, ise vene wake, tavuti kapano. Pantuma murungu na papa tashu. Ni zaenda mafasi kuti. Kwa mene ni zaenda ni kuti wa president. Wa president. Muna kamba kuti wa president. Bose ine ni zaso. Kwa emu pi muna kamba. Kuvote shuwa nanga mzungu wa vota andife tavuti kwa president yanga neni Kwa epo tipa nupaka sisi shuwa Tavuti kwa wana ni marungu ya mwaona Kuri ya ni za sheta kwa nji sima Kunga wadula, sumi ya masesu ya basabwe Asikansi ya watitindi Asa kitandiza ni ndani tapapa ata president yanga neni Ni mzambi ya muno siku lojija no seni uko Tavuti Wechi echi, metina kula ndire ni pomponda Muna buwela mwita kampeni, maguduza tizari ima 100 meters kuchoka mumumana. So nani ilo 100 meters na miti lima? So pano, batifu utaka pokola. Yanga nani ndiyo zaatu za ono ngeka. 65 years, nizenda ongena kutinchito. Wanu ono ngina mbe uzanga. Wanu wange zaapu usa na chani. Wazukuru wange zaapu usa chani. Baya mpi wa masebo. Muna buwela pa mponda. Na ukamba tim, so pano tachinja. Kapa metina lipo ni ikawarala. <laughs> Their counselor, who was visibly afraid of the uniformed men, could only give a statement contradicting himself. The war of their life Lord, depends on the garden. Some of them they have taken children to school, others up to university, and here the economic activity is merely gardening. There is no farming of maize or any other crops, but it's only garden. I want to tell the truth. They were summoned to go to, to court, but the challenge we, we have had, we went for a meeting with the traditional leaders and the lawyer for Enviro Farm came, came and him even the Enviro Farm director was there. They were given the summons. Our gardeners, our farmers refused to go to court. As though tear gas was not enough, some farmers were apprehended in the presence of this reporter. Efforts to get a comment from the area member of parliament, Sovia Masebo, were unsuccessful as her phone went unanswered. Vincent Piri for Kamne TV News, Kasisi, Chongwe District. Governance players are concerned with the perceived regional appointments in key government positions made by President Hagainde Hichilema. Civil rights activist Brebna Chengala says those appointed by the president should not cry foul of a tribal persecution when they are followed by law enforcement agencies once they leave office, just like it is the case now with former government officials. But United Party for National Development, UPND Deputy Secretary General Gertrude Imenda, says President Hagainde Hichilema has gone beyond tribal lines in his appointments and that his focus is on developing the country. More in this report. Governor's actors are concerned with appointments made so far by President Haka and Shirema in key positions, deeming them to be single-regioned. Institutions like the judiciary, legislature and the electoral commission of Zambia are said to be headed by people from the region where President Haka and Shirema got the most votes. First to raise this concern was a historian, Sishua Sishua, through a local radio station last week and through his publications on social media. Governor's activist Brenna Changala echoes the same sentiments and said current government officials should not cry of tribal persecution when they start being followed by law enforcement agencies once they leave office. In recent months, we have seen appointments which have raised eyebrows and he has ignored them because Mr. Hagainde does not care when people complain. Main appointments to critical institutions in our country are now reserved and preserved of our colleagues in Southern Province, Western, and to a lesser extent, Northwestern. The president must be sensitive. When people talk, they talk because there is a problem. The 
tribalism that is being exercised in the exercise of duty by this administration is worrisome. Meanwhile, United Party for National Development, UPND Deputy Secretary General Gertrude Demenda claims that President Haka Indeshirema has made balanced appointments from all regions, even where they did not vote for him. For appointments and so on. I'm giving you examples how he has appointed more people from the from the the, the region that he did not even that did not um, uh, uh, give him even more votes compared to the other. He is not looking at that. He is delivering development equally to all the provinces and all the regions. And when he has done even now, and he's going to develop Mansa Airport, they did not they did not vote for him much. But it is just given that uh, these other places are not been given. And that's the person you are accusing of tribalism. Surely our people be fair, honest, even if you don't like somebody. Vincent Piri for Cabinet TV News, Lusaka. Outspoken United Party for National Development, UPND member Vene Hajombwa, has charged that the selling price of millimeter by the Zambia National Service ZNS has exposed the greediness and selfishness of some millers. The government under the ZNS Eagles brand is selling a 25 kg bag of millimeter at 230 kwacha for breakfast meal and 190 kwacha for roller meal, respectively, with the commodity fetching 10 kwacha less in ZNS outlets. Speaking during a press conference on Monday, millimeter prices were high and ZNS's intervention is welcome. He adds that millers who, who are against the move should get used to the situation that ZNS is their new competition, not only focused on private profit, but also servicing ordinary citizens. More in the following report. Outspoken Edit Party for National Development, UPNT member Benia Chombwa has defended government's decision to allow the Zambia National Service ZNS to commence selling mini meal. Mr. Chombwa says the move is aimed at saving citizens from unjustified higher prices of mini meal. He was reacting to some millers whom he says are complaining over the move. ZNS to my eyes has exposed the selfishness of some millers. Because of course you, we all understand here that the interest of a businessman is to make more profit, more profit. If they can make, you know, is it 100 plus? It's okay with them. The interest of your government colleagues from the media, the UPND government, is to ensure that the step of food is affordable. Speaking during a press conference Monday morning, Mr. Chombo has since urged ZNS to increase production in order to meet the country's demand. Do more production, number one. I want to encourage ZNS to, to access more land so that they can have enough maize for next year, for production sake. I want to encourage them also to, to recruit more people from the agriculture part to ensure that we fulfill the campaign promise. I was in President Dijilema's campaign team for Christ's sake. And we have a duty today to ensure that campaign promises are fulfilled. Efforts to reach Miller's Association of Zambia President Andrew Chinta proved futile as at broadcast time. However, while it's still coming, the move other stakeholders have urged government to find a lasting solution to the country's higher minimum prices. For Kamnet TV News, Afia Skaptola, Lusaka. The opposition Patriotic Front, PF, has charged that the United Party for National Development, UPND, has worsened the country's social and economic challenges ever since they took over office in 2021. Party acting president Given Lubinda told the press in Lusaka in a briefing Monday that the prices of fuel, millimil and other essential commodities have doubled and in some cases tripled, despite assurances from the UPND while in opposition to achieve the opposite. Mr. Lubinda alleges that the 2024 national budget is likely to achieve nothing other than exciting foreign investors. The opposition leader also demanded that the government give details of the memorandum of understanding they have entered into with the Americans along with the Democratic Republic of Congo on electric vehicle minerals. More in this report. Monday, 16th October 2023, the Opposition Patriotic Front held a press conference in Lusaka 
to discuss the 2024 national budget and its party affairs, party acting president Given Lubinda downplayed the 177.9 billion kwacha 2024 national budget that was presented by Finance Minister Dr. Stumbekom Sokotwani, citing limited spending, further criticizing alleged government's failure to adequately tax the mines as an enticing mechanism for enhanced investment, which he said has worked against the intention. Mr. Lubinda has charged that the United Party for National Development, UPND administration, has worsened the country's social and economic challenges ever since they took over office in 2021, saying prices of fuel and miramil, among other commodities, have doubled and in some instances tripled, despite assuring to achieve the opposite while in opposition. We did warn him. We told him you cannot continue to have a monthly review of your prices. Seated here, early 2022, he did not listen. He was as arrogant as ever and argued that that was the best formula. We're not surprised to hear that he now has come to see what we already saw ourselves. But this also goes to show you that this is the trouble that you go into when you put people on job training. Minimal price. On the 24th of August 2021, Minimal was at the highest of 120 kwacha a bag. Highest. Not average, highest. 120 kwacha a bag. And now, it is no less than 320 kwacha. Even next to a milling company, it is no less than 320 kwacha. In some places, the price of mini mill has gone as 400 kwacha. Mr. Lubinda alleges that the 2024 national budget is likely to achieve nothing in the interest of citizens other than exciting foreign investors. The Patriotic Front are aware that Haga Inde Hijirema and his new doom government are working extremely hard at unlocking Zambia's economic potential for their own companies and their foreign collaborators and their sponsors, but not for the Zambians. I'm hoping that Muso Kotwane in his statement would explain to us what revenue shall Zambia generate out of that MOU that was entered into with the Americans. Why are they still shrouding it in secrecy? In addition, Zambians ought to be given the full details of the agreement entered into with the British on the 3rd of August 2023, when the UK Foreign Secretary visited Zambia. We are aware of the fact that only four pages, only four pages out of a document of 44 pages were used, were availed to the public. Four pages out of 44. And the opposition leader has vowed that police will not stop them from undertaking their planned nationwide political rallies. Patrick Soko, Cabinet News. Meanwhile, the opposition Patriotic Front has advised Minister of Education Douglas Yakalima to report himself to the police for uttering hate speech against the people of Luapola province. Last week, Mr. Siakalima told Parliament that Luapula province has remained the poorest and least developed region because of the poverty of minds of the people in the province. But Deputy PF Secretary General Nixon Chilangwa says Mr. Siakalima is out of order for demeaning the people of Luapula province. Mino PF Chairperson Legal George Chisanga has said they will initiate a fresh petition involving all PF members and others willing from the ruling party on the matter. for economic growth, for taking Luapula out of poverty through the world famous Luapula, Luapula Expo. And it's unfortunate, acting president, that when our colleagues stand to speak, I mean our colleagues in government, I mean the UPND, when they stand to speak, they always elect, they always elect to, to, to politics. Even where it is not necessary to politic, they always elect to be negative 
even where they don't need to be negative. So any person who makes a statement that is almost uh, borders on the on the insult against a particular grouping of people commits a crime under the which is called hate crime under section 65 of the Cyber Crime Act, and that offence is punishable by a penalty financially of 500,000 monetary, monetary units or a prison sentence. So like the president has intimated, it will be important for this individual to whom this statement was attributed. In fact, it's been carried uh, through all social media platforms. So he cannot deny that he didn't make that statement. It is an, it's a fact he made that statement and he made it with an intention of demeaning a region that belongs to the Republic of Zambia. He should present himself before the investigative wings. He should surrender himself and go and confess as a way of trying to make peace between himself and the rest of the nation, not only the Pula province, but the rest of the nation. Because there's a Minister of Education for the whole, for the whole nation. Zambia Institute of Policy Analysis and Research, ZIPA, says the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between government and official creditors will pave way for negotiations with private lenders. The government on Saturday announced that Zambia had reached an agreement with the Official Creditors Committee to culminate into debt treatment on bilateral levels with lenders. Reacting to the development, ZIPA Executive Director Harry Kim Puku says the MOU also confirms that the 2024 national budget we will be operating under the debt restructuring, allowing the country to channel more resources to social and growth sectors. We know Dr. Mpoku has called on the government to investigate factors that are leading to the high inflation rate, regardless of its commitment to budget credibility, to establish what exactly is causing the scenario. More in the following report. Move confirmed a major breakthrough in the long winding process to the country's debt restructuring deal. The deal, among others, confirms the country's relief heading into the implementation of the 2024 national budget. Zambia Institute for Policy Analysis and Research, ZIPA, says the MOU gives the country fiscal space to spend on other sectors other than debt servicing. The debt restructuring agreement that uh, the private creditors would also follow the same framework as the official creditors. So again, in the expectation of that, there was also no provision for debt servicing at the unsustainable levels. So this means that we've got a lot of savings in our budget. The money which should have gone to debt servicing is now available to be applied to other sectors. Zipa Executive Director Dr. Heri Kimpuku asked that all factors being stable, the country will see increased growth heading into 2024. Meanwhile, Dr. Mpuku has proposed an investigation into the continued surge in inflation rates to enable the country to devise targeted measures against the problem. The rising rate of inflation, uh, in spite of the government's commitment to budget credibility. So that's something which needs to be explored very carefully. We have some speculation about what may be causing this, um, but I think especially investigation along the monetary side uh, to see exactly whether there may be certain uh, aspects of the monetary and fiscal elements where these are not uh, easily amenable to monetary policy. For Cabinet TV News, Hafia Skaptula, Lusaka. This is Kamer Television Main News. We we'll take our first break. Join us for more news after the break. Nepal, have you connected to the Wi-Fi on the bus? It's fast. It's amazing. I've just downloaded my books and I'm about to complete the series. It's nice to me. Ah, no. I'm actually watching a reality show. He's about to propose. Oh, so sweet. Make your trip seem short yet comfortable and safe when you use the UBZ luxurious fully air-conditioned coaches that come fitted with amazing onboard entertainment, passenger information services, coffee making facilities and fridge for your hot and cold beverages, free and interrupted Wi-Fi for your gadgets, phone charging facilities, comfortable seats that recline to offer extra resting posture, safety seat belts, adjustable reading lights for each traveling client 
and of course, clean flushing toilets for your convenience. So travel in luxury and safety with UBZ Luxurious Coaches. UBZ will always take you there. In our quest to save nations and develop Africa, Savenda is investing in the agriculture sector so as to produce supply for both local and international markets. Housing over 12,000 pullets that are nurtured and fed with our locally made stock feed that comes from our own locally grown maize and soya beans. All processed from our recently installed milling and mixing plant. Our over 95,000 layers have an output capacity of over 1,500 trays of fresh eggs per day that are carefully selected and packaged for all the leading stores and supermarkets nationwide. Our greenhouses are fitted with the latest irrigation system and the seedlings are nurtured to ensure only healthy plants reach the fields. With our deliberate planting schedule, we are better placed to supply constantly without interruption, thus reliable. Savenda Farms is also changing lives of its dedicated workforce drawn from the local community and beyond. So the next time you think fresh and green, think Savenda Farms. Get all the latest updates in court news only on Kamne TV. We take you and make you feel part of the court sessions through our in-depth coverage of the adjudication process, get informed on those are being arrested, delayed and denied the police bond of bail victims, persons taking plea, court adjournments, verdicts, and those administration issues in the judiciary. Come Next TV is on channel 274 on DSTV, channel 25 on GoTV, and find us on channel 106 on Topstar. You can also follow and give us a like on our social media platforms. Comnet TV, not just another channel. Welcome back. We'll continue with the news. Police in Lusaka have thwarted a scam in which two men have been arrested for being in possession of implements of forgery. Police have also recovered suspected counterfeit money amounting to 1.2 million United States dollars from the suspects identified as James Goe Malu, a Sudanese of Maheva refugees resettlement, and Inasio Tembe, a Mozambican of Woodlands residential area in Lusaka. Police Deputy Public Relations Officer Danny Mwale says the suspects are also facing a charge of obtaining money by false pretense after they scammed a man only identified as Mr. Perry. Police in Lusaka have thwarted a scam in which two men have been arrested for being in possession of implements of forgery. Police have also recovered the suspected counterfeit money amounting to 1.2 million United States dollars from the suspects identified as James Garu Malu, a Sudanese of Maheba refugee resettlement, and Enesho Tembe, a Mozambican of Woodlands residential area in Lusaka. The suspects are also facing a charge of obtaining money by false princesses after they scammed a man only identified as Mr. Piri of Lilai Estate, money amounting to 75,000 kwacha. Mr. Piri was made to believe that they were investors who wanted to invest and partner with him in petroleum and filling station business in Zambia. The suspects promised Mr. Piri that they would invest money amounting to six million uh, kwacha in order to start the business before showing him a safe containing and disclosed amount of money in United States dollars. Mr. Piri was told to push in a 75,000 kwacha as his initial investment. Later, after he paid the money, he was told to bring in more money and that they needed to buy some chemical. Mr. Piri then shared the idea with his friend who told him that he had been scammed and quickly he reported the matter to police. Police received a report on October 14, 2023, around 13 hours, and immediately officers moved in and managed to apprehend the suspects from one of the lodges in Olympia Park. Officers searched their room and uh, recovered a metal safe containing 1.2 million United States dollars suspected to be counterfeit and a machine suspected to be used in forging currencies. They are detained in police custody while investigations have heightened. Thank you. All efforts to locate fugitive ex-political advisor Kaiser Zulu have proved futile as his sureties ask for an extension from the Lusaka Magistrate Court. 
Lusaka Magistrate Silvia Munyinya has extended the bench warrant she issued against Mr. Kaiser Zulu after Lumezi Area Member of Parliament Munia Zulu and his counterpart Chilubi MP Malenga Fube asked the court Monday morning for more time to find the accused person. Mr. Zulu, has, who served as a political advisor under the Patriotic Front Administration, is facing two counts of failure to surrender his diplomatic passport and to appear before the nearest immigration officer. Mr. Zulu has been elusive since June 2023. Magistrate Sylvia Munyinya has extended the warrant of arrest to the 14th of November 2023. A business executive, Dean Mwanga, has told the Lusaka Magistrate Court that Economic and Equity Party leader Chilufia Tayali was being malicious when he alleged that Chief Mugoni had, had knowledge about the gassing incident that characterized the country. Mr. Mwanga, who is also a journalist, told the Lusaka Magistrate Court that the gassing incident occurred in 2019 while the treason case involved President Haka, involving President Hakainde Chilema, the opposition leader. The state witness further testified that there was no way President Hakainde Ichilaba, then opposition leader, would have coordinated and funded gassing. This is in a case in which Mr. Tayali is accused of harassing the traditional leader, Chief Mugoni, through social media by alleging that he planned the gassing incident with a view to having President Hakainde Ichilaba, when he was still in opposition, released from prison. Of October 2023, for continued trial. The Media Institute of Southern Africa, Mr. Zambia chapter, has called on journalists in the country to seek the avenues that promote the practice of ethical journalism. Mr. Zambia chapter National Coordinator Austin Kayanda says journalists play a critical role in the welfare of society, hence the need to shift to solution-based journalism. Speaking during the launch of a six-day developmental journalism training in Lusaka on Monday, Mr. Kayanda observes that journalists should strive to provide content that aims at unearthing solutions to challenges the country is facing. The people um, want plural and uh, diverse media that promotes um, uh, diversity of opinions and the response to the uh, uh, diverse aspiration and expectation of the entire population, embracing age, education, gender, a social status, interest and eth uh, ethnic uh, background. They also want private media that balances commercial interest and developmental imperatives. The media that are accurate, are accountable, and corrupt free, and the media that promotes media accuracy among, other, uh, among their audiences. Gentlemen and ladies, Mr. Zambia, with the support from the German embassy, is implementing a project on building resilient journalism in Zambia. The project is support, uh, supporting the development of quality uh, journalism in Zambia that will encounter misinformation and disinformation. This project has come at the right time, especially when there is a rise on the online media and other internet platforms that have democratically increased access to the wider range of information. The cost of living for a family of five in Lusaka, as measured by JCDR for September, has reduced to 9,142 kwacha 6 ngwe from 9,267 kwacha 34 ngwe in August. JCDR has further urged the government to give profound consideration to the preferential option for the poor, vulnerable, and marginalized when crafting and executing policies, saying it is imperative that the government actively extends its support and solidarity to those vulnerable segments of society and establishes as well as effectively enforces pro-poor policies. The center has since called upon the government, civil society and the private sector to have open and honest conversations, collaborate and develop sustainable strategies that address the root causes of high living, of high cost of living. Seasonal changes continue to exert influence on the pricing of both food and non-food items. The cost of living for a family of five, as measured by the Jesuit Center for Theological Reflection, Basic Needs and Nutrition Basket, in the month of September in Lusaka, stood at 9,146 kwacha.06 singwe. Our research observes that the average price of charcoal reduced by 80 kwacha, 
The research also revealed an increase in the prices of food items such as roller mini meal as well as vegetables that increased. Once more, the September basket underscores the importance of seasonal shifts, particularly as we transition into the hot season. Comparing the basic needs and nutrition basket charcoal price data from the last two years during the same time frame provides valuable insights. In 2022 and 2021, similarly, the price of 90 kg bag of charcoal decreased at around this time. Another key item to highlight is that of vegetables, whose price has gone up during the dry season, a phenomenon that is not unique to Zambia, but is observed in many regions around the world. While the month-on-month -month overall basket, under reflection, observed a temporary reduction, it is essential to acknowledge that this reduction is far from sufficient to addressing the overarching issue. We'll take our second and final break. We'll have sports and international news after the break. Are you planning to marry or get married? Contact the Cabinet Media team for a professional capturing of your big day in life. Let your relatives, friends and the nation join you in celebrating your big day on television. Just at a manageable fee, Cabinet Television will cover and transmit your wedding on your channel of choice. Contact the marketing department on mobile number. Cabinet Television, not just another channel. Give my love to have and home. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage. Ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Welcome back. In international news, some 130 leaders from Africa, South America and other emerging markets are gathering in China for a meeting organized by the Chinese government that will mark the 10th anniversary of its Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. Denis Sasungweso of the Congo, Ethiopia's Abi Ahmed and Nigeria's Kashim Shetima arrived Monday, October 16 in Beijing. Other leaders who arrived on Monday included Sri Lankan President Raniu Wakramashinge, Papua New Guinean President Prime Minister James Marape and Cambodian Prime Minister Han Manet. Here's a roundup of international news for more. Some 130 leaders from Africa, South America and other emerging markets are gathering in China for a meeting organized by the Chinese government that will mark the 10th anniversary of its Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. Dennis Sasson Gesso of the Congo, Ethiopia's Abiy Ahmed and Nigeria's Kashim Shetima arrived Monday in Beijing. The summit, kicking off on October 17th, is the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation. The BRI is a plan that China launched a decade ago. Under the initiative, a signature policy of President Xi Jinping, Chinese companies have built infrastructures including ports, roads and power plants around the world in a bid to boost trade and economic growth. One decade down the line, some observers say the initiative may be losing steam as Beijing becomes more averse to risk and as the domestic economy struggles to bounce back to pre-pandemic growth levels. The main events of the two-day meeting are scheduled on Wednesday. Global organizations will also be in attendance. Former soccer star George Weir casting his vote in elections in Monrovia last Tuesday as he seeks a second term in office as Liberia's president. 
As the National Elections Commission continues to tally results from the presidential and legislative polls, he's nearly tied in the race for the presidency with opposition leader Joseph Burkai. Provisional results published on Sunday show Weyer had 43.8% to Burkai's 43.5%. The Commission has 15 days from the date of the election to announce the final results. If neither candidate gets more than 50%, a runoff will be held on the 7th of November. In the 2017 poll, the two men also faced a second round of voting, which Weyer ultimately won with 61.5%. International observers declared last week's poll as largely peaceful. But the West African regional bloc ECOWAS has warned against groups attempting to declare premature victories, calling on Liberians to exercise restraint as they wait for the official provisional results. Liberia is still recovering from two brutal civil wars that ended in 2003. Tens of thousands of Moroccans took to the streets of Rabat over the weekend in support of the Palestinians amid the Gaza war. It was the biggest demonstration in the North African Kingdom since it normalized ties with Israel in 2020 in a US-sponsored deal. This march firmly expresses our support for the people of Palestine and their courageous resistance. It also represents the Moroccan voice refusing normalization of ties with Israel and rejecting the Zionist regime, thus reaffirming commitments to the Palestinian cause. The march comes as Israel continues its intense reprisals against the Gaza Strip after the militant group Hamas launched an attack on southern Israel from the Palestinian enclave 10 days ago. Thousands of people have been killed on both sides. These are crimes against humanity and we're here to express our solidarity. We want peace. We want international organizations to ensure that the Palestinian people regain their rights. And we also demand from the Moroccan state that no relation should be established with the Zionist state. Until now, Morocco's anti-normalization movement has only been able to mobilize at most a few hundred people. The treaty with Israel has been of great importance to Rabat. And now in, inter, in sports news, Kawe Bay Zambia Super League side, Prison Leopards, have appointed Chris Kaunda as their new head coach. Kaunda was unveiled this morning during a press conference streamed live from the Correctional Service Headquarters in Kabwe. Kaunda takes over from Albert Kachinga, who dumped the club last week to join Northwestern-based side Trident FC. On the absence of Kachinga, assistant coach Collins Mulenga took charge of the team in the interim together with goalkeeper coach Eugene Chachua. Kachinga was in charge of the collect boys in the last two years since taking over from Ishmael Balanga back in 2021. Kaunda's last stint was at Kawe Warriors where he was appointed to replace Ian Bakala in January 2022 before being replaced by George Luandamina in June. Kaunda's first game with the Collect Boys will be away to Mutondo Stars this Saturday. To end the television news, the headlines once again. Police in Chongwe used tear gas canisters to disperse protesting farmers. Government challenged to disclose bilateral deals on electric vehicles, minerals. The UPND dispels accessions of regional appointments in government. In foreign news, African leaders arrive in Beijing for third Belt and Road Forum. And in sports news, Chris Kaunda named new prison leopards head coach. The coming verse of the day is coming from the book of Psalms 112 verse 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Thank you for watching Camera Television News. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Good night.